Welcome. Today in our practice, we're going to do some work on shoulder stability and mobility. And for this practice, you're going to want a belt, or if you don't have a belt, you can use a hand towel or a kitchen towel. And then I'm going to be using a chair for something that we're going to do later. So if you have a, um, a stable surface, a coffee table can work, a chair can work, anything like that. You'll, it'll make sense once we get there. So to begin with, if you have a belt, make a loop in it that's the loop is about as wide as your shoulders. And if you don't have a belt, don't worry about it. Just have your kitchen towel nearby. We're going to leave it just resting on the lap. And then we're going to take one moment to just bring attention in and prepare for our yoga practice. You can close your eyes just for a moment and let go of whatever you were doing before so that you can be here in this moment. As you exhale again, allow your head to release or bow forward towards your heart. And then you're going to take your hands and you're going to bring them behind your skull and just loosely interlace add a little bit of weight to the back of the head. So just stretching the back of the neck at this point. And even as the head is bowed forward, lift the sternum up and draw your middle, your ribs back in space. Even the back ribs go back. While your head is still looking down, if you have your eyes closed, just begin to blink your eyes open. Soften your gaze so that you can see even the periphery, not just your own body. And then you're going to push into your hands with your head and begin to elevate the head back to a neutral position above the shoulders, above the hips. From here, you're going to flare your elbows open. And as if, as if you were um, standing at a wall, your knuckles and your elbows are trying to touch that wall. And as you open them back, you're stretching across the front of the chest. See if you can quiet the neck muscles and the upper trapezius, that's where the neck and shoulders meet. So right here. Keep the elbows back, keep the chest lifted, and apply a little bit of pressure into your head as if your knuckles were touching that imaginary wall. And then tip along that imaginary wall over to the right. So you don't have to go to your max, max, maximum. Be just kind to your body, to yourself here, and just go where you can, where you can feel that sense of stretch on the left side of your body and you can keep the left elbow back. Inhale, come upright. Readjust here if you need to at all. And then tip the other way. Some weight staying down in the right hip, but the tip of the right elbow going toward the sky. Head gently back into the headrest, knuckles and elbows pushing back into this imaginary wall that's behind you. Please come back to center and just slip the hands off, but keep the interlace. You're going to take that interlace and you're going to turn your palms and place them out forward in front of you. So you can stay facing the way that you're facing. I'm going to turn so you can see this from the side. So you're basically going to just keep your upper arms or your arms really um, parallel to the ground and you're going to push the hands forward away from your chest. And as you do that, you're going to flex or round your spine back. So draw the sternum back and see if you can broaden across your shoulder blades. Pushing your fingers into the backs of the hands, tuck the tail under, let the head gaze down. Pull the ribs in and spread the back apart. And then you're going to just sit upright and release the clasp of the hands. Just drop the hands down by your sides, taking the palms forward, and just begin to roll your wrists. You can roll in either direction. It's really fun to try to do both the same direction. It doesn't work very well. 
but just move them around a little bit and you can let that circle grow so that it includes maybe the elbows too. So soft fists moving the wrists and or the elbows and just allowing for any movements to come that might help loosen up shoulders, elbows, wrists. We're going for mobility here in the arms. So the next time that it makes sense to you, you're gonna bring your arms up and out and you're gonna cross. Let's do the right elbow on top of the left. You're gonna bend your elbows and clasp either your upper arms or your shoulders. And again, I'm gonna turn so that you can see this. So with your clasp as is, you're gonna pull up on your shoulders and kind of lift your shoulders up away from your hips. And then once you have all that length in your side body, you're gonna arch your back. So now in a, a back bend or spinal extension and start to lift your gaze. As you look up, lift the elbows somewhat and it doesn't have to be super duper high. It's just that sense of sort of lifting the shoulder girdle, lifting the gaze, lifting the ribs. And then as you exhale, let the elbows drop down and the spine round. And in this one, you're gonna pull gently on your shoulders kind of toward one another as if to pull your shoulder blades apart on your back. So we're gonna do this one more time. So we're gonna sit upright. We're gonna lift the shoulders up a little bit towards the ears. And we're doing that by lengthening the sides of the body, not by gripping the neck muscles. And then the chest and sternum lift up and the elbows lift up and even the gaze lifts slightly. And when you come out of this, you're gonna round and come forward or down, facing toward the floor with your head, rounding the back, pulling the back ribs apart. And begin to sit upright, unclasp from your shoulders and just sweep the arms up like you're drawing two circles. And then come around and put the other arm on top, which is the left one. We're just going right into the other side. So you're holding your upper arms or your shoulders. And then the first step is to lengthen through the sides of the body. So you're really kind of lifting your rib cage up and you're kind of using your hands to help create some buoyancy and some lightness in the shoulders. And then begin to extend the spine. So squeezing at the bottom tips of the shoulder blades to lift the chest and lift the gaze. On exhale, round the back. Draw the waistline in, the front of the ribs in. Spread the back ribs back and apart. Pull on your shoulders like you're trying to pull your shoulder blades apart from one another on your back. One more time, inhale, lift and lengthen, soften the neck, soften the brow, soften that sense of gripping, clenching, or trying to control things. Exhale, face down and in, tucking the tail, rounding the back. As you inhale, Roll through the middle, unclasp the hands. Again, sweep the arms up like jazz hands and they come out and down to the sides. Okay, so you're gonna grab your belt that's folded into a loop or your kitchen or hand towel. And then you're gonna go ahead and stand. We're gonna use this chair um, again in a moment. So right now we don't need it. Once you have your prop, you're gonna hold it with your palms out. So I'm gonna approach the camera so you can better see this. If you are using a loop, you put your hands in it like so, you'll be pushing against that tension. If you are using a towel, you just hold it with your grip in your hands. Okay, so now that you've seen that, you're gonna stand well and you're gonna draw your elbows down by your side. So from the side view, your elbow is right in line with your side body. Upper arm is down by the side body. Keep the elbows there and then pull against your prop, right? So if you're using a belt, you're holding it, pulling uh, with the palms up. If you're holding a towel, it's like you're trying to rip it in half. And as you keep this gentle but even amount of pressure against the prop, start to turn your awareness to your upper back 
and the back of the shoulder blades. We're trying to engage the back of the shoulder girdle, lift the chest, and broaden the collarbones. Stay with it just a little bit longer. So we're aiming for sort of this area right in here, among other things. And while you hold it just a little bit longer, try to make the work even from one arm to the other. Try to roll the outer shoulders back like your thumbs are moving away from each other. And quiet your neck just a little bit. Memorize what's working. Just get that picture in your head. And then put your prop down. With your hands by your sides, turn your palms forward and see if you can engage that same part of the back of the shoulder to roll the chest to open. Engaging the shoulder blades onto the back, checking that you don't have the ribs jutting forward, but that the rib cage is back over the hips. So this is Tadasana with the shoulders. This is mountain pose. We're gonna repeat bending the elbows hands forward as if we're holding two trays. So you turn on those muscles that you're teaching to work right now in the strength of the shoulders. And then you're gonna to begin to rotate as if you're serving those two trays to people on either side of you. It's not about how far you move those two trays apart, but try to keep your elbows kind of tucked in somewhat near your body without jutting the ribs forward, keeping that middle of the body in integrity. Holding the work in the back of the shoulders, begin to stretch your arms out laterally. So you're only gonna lift and reach out through your arms so much that you don't lose that sense of work that you've created in the back body. Let's take one more breath in. And as you exhale, you're gonna release your hands and just fold right over into a forward bend. Place your hands down on the floor or on blocks. Let your head dangle, let your shoulders release. You can even move them around a little bit or nod the head yes. When you inhale, slide your hands up onto your shins Push into your legs and take the chest forward and see if you can get your shoulders to lift up onto your back instead of rounding forward towards the floor. Exhale, fold forward. So let's do this twice more. It's something we do a lot in yoga practice. Inhale to a long spine or halfway lift, it's often called. But bring the shoulders into the pose. Exhale, bow. Do the last one, thinking like Tadasana here. Your shoulders are on your back, just like they were when you were standing. Exhale, bow. When you inhale again, come through that flat back, roll the shoulders back, and then reach your arms up overhead and reach nice and high. As you exhale, you're gonna bring your right hand down your leg and you're just gonna side bend over to the right. Push back with your thumb on your left hand, palm toward the midline, head back, chest open. Inhale, center, just windmill the arms the other way and send the left arm down your leg and the right arm up and over. Try to keep your head back, your arm back, and your chest open. Inhale, center, and just to release that top arm. Lift your arms straight out in front of you. You don't have to turn on your mat. I just do that so you can see. It doesn't matter which way your hands are facing right now, but with your arms horizontal, you're gonna to begin to draw your shoulders back and front. So we call this, in anatomical terms, retraction, where pulling the shoulder blades onto the back and protraction. The shoulder blades are broadening off the back and you can see that the middle isn't really moving that much. We're just teaching the arms to move forward and 
backward. We're keeping the elbows straight and we're engaging right around the outer uh, kind of armpit and back between the shoulder blades. So do that a couple more times and see if you can get the work to happen lower across your upper back instead of higher by your neck. Take one more breath in. When you exhale, just drop your hands. So we're gonna take that action and we're gonna use our chair or counter or coffee table and we're gonna apply that in a forward direction. So what you're gonna do is do like your halfway lift, but you're gonna prop yourself with one hand on that surface. So that's why you want it to be stable. Once you have that, you're gonna dangle the opposite arm. So this is my right arm, dangling the right arm. Your chest is gonna stay square to the floor. So you're not turning your chest and torso at all. Chest and torso totally still. All you're gonna move is the arm. So you're gonna protract, which means reach down in the shoulder joint, shoulder broadens off the back. And now you're gonna retract. So you're lifting the arm bone up as if you're kind of plugging it into, it's not really a socket, but into the shoulder blade. So do that one more time. So release, just the shoulder is moving down toward the floor, not the torso. Torso's totally still. You can even bend your knees if it's too much on your back. Draw the arm bone up into the shoulder blade. And then we're gonna add just bending the elbow back alongside the body. And then we're releasing. This is kind of a classic row maneuver you could do in a weight room. You could always add a weight here if you wanted to, but first retraction, packing the shoulder blades on the back, and then bend your elbow. You can turn your palm toward the midline as if you're picking up something off the floor. And then release. Recruit the strength of your middle. Stand, pause, compare your shoulders and see if there's anything that you notice between the two. Let's do the other side. I'm just gonna turn around and face the other way. So now right hand on the prop for support and stability. Chest is um, parallel to the floor, or square to the floor. Dangle the left arm. Moving just the shoulder and arm, not the torso or the legs. Reach toward the floor, protraction, shoulder blade widens on the back. Now suck the arm bone up, retraction. And release, protraction, stretch down. Try not to move the chest around. Just suck the arm bone up, the shoulder blade draws onto the back. And now bend your elbow up by your side body. You can even take it a little higher than your side body and then release. Let's do that again. Reach down, not turning the chest, just letting the shoulder stretch. And now engaging the back body and the side body, the serratus muscles to draw the shoulder blade onto the back. And then bending the elbow as if picking up a weight and drawing it up by your side. And then you're gonna release that. Engage your middle. Stand up. If you have a chair or prop on your mat, just move that to the side. And then we're gonna take this to the floor. So if you're not weight bearing on your shoulders, this is the time to check out and say goodbye. But if you want to continue, we're gonna do a little bit more work down on the floor that's gonna involve a tiny bit of weight bearing. Roll the shoulders and chest open in Tadasana. Check that the ribs have not slid forward. On the in-breath, take the arms overhead as if grazing a wall with the hands, head back, hands back. Exhale, swan dive forward. Touch the floor. We're just gonna do this one time now. Hands either on the shins, ankles, or the floor. Inhale, lengthen the spine. And as you exhale, you're gonna step to all fours. When you get to all fours, move your hands about a handprint forward from under your shoulders and take your knees back, maybe six inches or eight inches behind the line of your hips. You're gonna send your hips forward in a kneeling plank. 
Tuck the tail, squeeze the glutes slightly, lower belly engaged. We're gonna attempt to do protraction and retraction in the upper back here. So head in line with spine, push the floor down, broaden the back, lift the sternum up away from the ground. That's protraction. Now, arms stay straight, let the shoulder blades draw together and the chest release down between the arms. That's retraction. Same thing we did standing, we're just doing it here. Let's do that one more time. Push the floor away. The torso and hips are not moving very much. We're just drawing the shoulders onto the back and pushing the floor down to move them away from each other. Okay, the next time you get them on the back, hold them that way and take the whole exhale, shoulders back, all the way to the floor. Release your feet if the toes were curled under. Open the hands out to the sides and hover them off the ground. We're gonna lift the elbows and hands and head, three pulses up, up, up. Keep the head up, but lower it slightly. Stretch forward any amount with the elbows and hands hovering, lifting them toward the sky. Slide hands back under the shoulders. Curl the shoulders back, peel the spine up off the ground, and come up into Cobra with this new information of firing the muscles of the back body. On exhale, release. Make a pillow with your hands and just relax your shoulders now. When you're ready to move, try to get that same work of shoulders rolling back. Push yourself up to all fours and step forward with your right foot. Now I'm gonna turn and face you, but you can stay on your mat as you were. Bring your hands up onto the right leg and then you're gonna bend your left elbow Forward. You're going to lift it so it's about the height of your shoulder right now, and you're going to keep your forearm vertical. Point the tip of your elbow forward, and without losing that forward orientation, see how far you can reach. So normally, we kind of like let the elbow roll open to the side. I'm asking you to keep the elbow rotated forward and see what, just how far you can stretch it. And then you're gonna just reverse. You're bringing the elbow out in front and down from the side. It looks like so. Elbow pointing forward, forearm vertical. Without letting the elbow widen out to the left, how high can you reach? What's working to hold that alignment? Shoulder stability, that's what. As you exhale, twist, just drop that hand to the opposite knee, the other hand comes to your back. Turn your spine. Inhale, center, and release to all fours. So we're gonna repeat the kneeling plank or full plank if you want it, scapular stabilization so just one or two times, practice retraction, protraction, moving the shoulder blades in this weight-bearing way. Once the shoulders are on the back, lower carefully to the floor. This time, just go right into your back bend, keeping shoulders on the back the whole time, shoulder blades drawn in to help broaden and open the heart. Exhale, push to all fours. Step forward with your left foot. Left hand on the knee for support. Right hand forward, 90 degree at the elbow to start with. Point the tip, that bone of your elbow forward, straight out in front of your shoulder, and keep the forearm roughly vertical. You're gonna to begin to reach. 
however high you can without losing that forward orientation, this rotation in the arm. It's called external rotation. It's pretty hard to do in the upright overhead plane. And then you bring it back down. You're just reversing course. And we're going to do that one more time. As the hand gets upright, check that that elbow hasn't gone out wide. Mine just had. Just notice where the limit is, where you can hold that work, that integrity in the shoulder joint. And just let go for a moment, really reach. Cross it over and twist. Good job, untwist. And this time we're gonna go to lying on the back. So just make your way there. And once you have arrived on your back, just pause there. Bend your knees, put your feet flat on the mat. And then recreate this bent elbow position. We just had it a moment to go. Fingers pointing toward the sky. We're prepping for bridge pose, but we're paying special attention in the shoulder area. So push the shoulders back, push the elbows back until you feel the chest pop up. Then do a little tiny bit of tail tuck, squeeze your glute, that's your butt muscle, squeeze your glutes and lift your hips. Really try to uh, anchor the shoulders to the mat the outer shoulders, the shoulder blades will lift into the back of the heart and move the heart towards the chin. And you'll notice that my voice is mostly normal sounding. So you want to make sure that you have enough space for your throat, that you're not swooshing your neck, unable to breathe or unable to talk. As you come down, pull your hips away from your head just to lengthen the spine. And turn your elbows out and bring your hands to your belly or your pelvis. Just take a couple breaths. And go ahead and lift up your right foot, grab your right knee or the back of your leg and pull it in deep toward your body, toward your torso, I mean. You can widen it just a little out to the right to make space for your chest, your belly, your hip. Allow the low back to soften and lengthen. Now slip that ankle onto the left knee. Pick up the legs, hold the left leg with your hands. Let's give that right hip a little bit of a stretch. And then we'll switch. Let's put the right foot down flat on the floor. Pull the left knee in. Just maybe widening it a touch to the left. Letting the back receive that sort of pressure and length against the floor. Especially on the left side. Even though you're holding with your hands, try to relax your shoulders. They did enough work today. Cross your ankle over your right knee. Pick up the right leg. And this is a good time to also think about any, any weight that you've been carrying there. I mean, this is the, the metaphor for carrying the weight of the world. So what can you soften your grip around? today? What have you been clenching, grabbing, grasping for that you can just ever so slightly let that fist of grasping go? Release your legs and just take a moment to lie on the floor in a little quick shavasana.
allowing the body to soften and the mind to quiet. sounds cliche to say whatever's not serving you let it go but this is often the case with the shoulders that we've been given too much to carry and the two things that we can do to help ourselves are to strengthen our ability to hold ourselves up and to let go of what's not ours to hold. So thank you so much for taking the time to work with me today, for trusting me with your practice and for building your own strength, resilience, and freedom. I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.